Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting baskets of flowers. I recently finished the sketchbook so I made a new one and this is going to be the first painting in my new sketchbook. So let's begin by sketching out the composition. I want there to be a few baskets of flowers just displayed maybe in front of a porch. So I'm just going to play around with the height of these baskets or the planters. And as for the plants themselves, I'm just going to draw a rough silhouette to indicate the space as well as the shape of those plants. What's more important though is the formation of the crates and the baskets or the planters. I want this to have a nice balance on the page, so I'm just trying to figure out how to stack them all together. As you can see, I'm reducing all the elements into very basic shapes to make it much easier to plan out. And the lines are also very lightly drawn, so it's much easier for me to erase and reposition certain items. But once I'm happy with how everything is positioned, that's when I will start adding on the smaller details, like the lines of the crates here. And I'm also going to reshape or just indicate the silhouette of these plants as well. I'm not going to draw too much for the flowers, I just want to indicate, as I mentioned, the silhouette. This is just to remind myself of the overall composition that I'm going for as I paint, since I'm going to be painting most of the flowers freehand later on. As for the baskets, I just want to make sure that the outline is more or less clean enough for me to paint on. So here are the colors that I'm going to be using. Firstly, this is Burnt Umber by Holbein, Indigo by Schmincke, New Gamboche by Daniel Smith, Ultramarine Finest by Schmincke, Grey of Grey by Holbein, Quinn Red by Daniel Smith, and I'll also be using Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martins. Let's begin to paint. The first color that I'm going to make is this light blue. I've been really loving this color mixture. It's basically just Ultramarine Finest with Grey of Grey, and it creates this really cute periwinkle blue. And with this, I just paint on four petal flowers that I distribute around the bush that I basically drew out on this basket. While I'm painting the flowers, I used a light load on my brush so it dries really quickly. This way, I can move on to paint the greenery surrounding the flowers. And as for the leaves or the greeneries, I used a mix of indigo and new gamboge. With a slight tone of green, I'm just going to paint around the flowers that I've already painted, making sure that they're completely dry so the paint won't travel into each other, instead they stay nice and separated. After this, I added more indigo into the previous mixture to create a darker tone of green, and I also used a slightly thicker consistency to paint the shadows on the right hand side of the flower bush as well as under some of the flowers. For some of the harsher edges, I like to loosen it up by spreading or smudging the edges with a clean damp brush. And after that, I use a slightly darker value of the blue, so this has a bit more ultramarine fineness in the mix. It's also a slightly thicker consistency, and I'm going to use this darker value to paint the center of these flowers. With whatever was left on my brush, I also like to add more flowers on the surrounding area. I feel like the placement of the flower bush here looks a bit flat, so I also extended it a little bit downwards. Now moving on to the next flower, I'm going to be leaving the color of the flowers white. So instead of painting it straight away, I'm going to draw it out by hand one by one. While drawing this, I'm keeping the shape simple, it's just a five petal flower with frills for some of the ends of the petals. And I'm just going to play around with how they're bunched up together, the placement, angle, and also the size. For this one, I want it to look less like a bush and more spread out with loose leaves framing the flowers. So as you can see, I'm placing some flowers really further away and I want the spread to somewhat be a little bit diagonal, which is why on the right hand side, the flowers are a little bit higher than the left. For some of the flowers which are around the outer portion of this plant, I like to foreshorten the flowers or some of the petals and this will look like the flowers are wrapping around instead of it just lying flat. Next I'm going to be painting some of the leaves around the flowers, this time I'm not just coloring in in between the flowers, instead I want to manually draw out some leaves surrounding or framing some of the flowers here using the same lighter green before from Indigo and New Gamboche. 
And after drawing out a few leaves and they're more or less dry, I'm going to go back in with a darker value, then paint around those leaves and flowers. You don't have to exaggerate the tone of green so much. So on the left side, I'm not using as harsh of a darker green as on the right hand side because I want the right hand side to be in shadow. And once the center of the plant looks more dense, I'm going to add on more leaves with the darker value on top of some of the lighter leaves. And once I get closer to the outer parts of the plant, I'm going to add some loose stems connecting to the flowers that I drew out earlier and also adding leaves surrounding those stems and flowers. Now let's move on to the next one. I want this one to be purple and for the color I used a mix of Ultramarine Finest with Quin Red and Grey of Grey. And as I was painting this, I was thinking of Delphiniums even though I know scale wise it's kind of too small, but that's what I had in mind. So I kind of piled flowers together into cone shapes, playing around with the different ratios of color as well as consistencies. For some of the flowers in front, I tend to use a thicker consistency and for the ones at the back, I use a lighter consistency and this will just give a slight illusion of depth. Feel free to play around with the color if you want these to be more of a periwinkle blue, you can add more ultramarine finest in the mixture or if you want these to be more pink, you can add more quin red in the mix. Just play around, you can also mix and match those colors together depending on your taste. Personally, I'm going to incorporate different colors. So after painting on a few flowers, I'm going to use them as guide and redefine some of them over again using a slightly thicker consistency and also playing more with the ratio this time. So as you can see, the one at the back that I just painted is a little bit more pink compared to the one that I'm painting right now, which has more ultramarine finest. After I've painted a few flowers, then I'm going to start adding on the leaves or the greenery surrounding the flowers. And just like before, I'm going to use a slightly darker tone of green on the right hand side compared to the left. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just to fill in those gaps. Now, as for the next flower, I was thinking of adding bunny tails because I like the fluffiness of it but I didn't end up liking it because I didn't end up forming it well enough and I wasn't really that aware when I was painting it. So feel free to change up the flower if you would like to but here's just my process in case you want to paint the same flower still. For the soft muted pink, here I used a mix of New Gamboge with Quin Red and Grey of Grey. And with that color, I first use a thin consistency to paint on ovals, then I'm going to then layer a slightly thicker consistency for a bit more depth. When I was painting the first layer, that's when I realized that it was way too evenly distributed, which is why the whole composition looks a little bit stiff. This is also why I went over certain parts of the bunny tail using a slightly thicker consistency. So certain areas are a little bit more dense than others, but Overall, it was already too late since generally it's quite even. So please be mindful if you're painting this yourself. You might want to draw out a simple silhouette of the placement of these flowers. Personally, I'd play with the density of certain areas where some parts are a bit more empty than others. And also maybe even think of them as clumps or groups instead of just evenly distributing them like I did. For the color of the green, I also decided to mute it with Quin Red and also Grey of Grey. I think this also played a role in making the composition look a bit more gloomy for my liking. Instead, I would just suggest for you to stick with the brighter greens. The leaves of the Delphinium should be dry, so here I'm going back in with a darker green and a thick consistency to paint on more leaves and also some stems which you can see visible in between the flowers. Next, I'm going to mix up colors for the baskets. For this, I used a mix of New Gamboge, Burnt Umber, and Grey of Grey, and I'm using a thin consistency to paint the base color. I added a slightly thicker consistency on the right-hand side so the basket doesn't look flat. For the next one, I'm going to mute the color, so I added a little bit of indigo to the previous mix. I'm using a medium consistency that I spread out, but I want to use a slightly thicker consistency on the right than on the left, just like the first basket. 
Then for another tone of brown, I added Morni Gamboge in the mixture and again I'm going to use a light to medium consistency and spread it all around the second one. This one is not going to be a basket but I'm going to paint on the texture later on. I ended up using a thicker consistency to cover this whole planter since the light is coming from the top left so I'm just going to use a slightly thicker consistency all over. For a darker value, I ended up adding some burnt umber with a bit more indigo and also quin red. I'm going to place this under the flowers. Since I already have a lot of brown on my palette, I'm just going to add grey of grey for a different tone that I'm going to use to paint the last basket. Now I'm going to mix up the browns on the left here. It doesn't really matter what tone of brown you decide to mix up, I just want to make sure that they're all different so I can keep them separated from each other. For this crate, I'm starting with a light consistency, then I use a thicker consistency on the left and also the top. I'm also going to apply something similar on this left crate. This time I added new gamboge into the mix for a different tone of brown. And I also use a thin consistency for the top and the side, but a thicker consistency in front since this area will be in shadow. I felt like the crate on the right here kind of dried a little bit too light so I ended up going over the front area again using a thicker consistency. Now I'm going to leave the planters, the baskets and the crates for now and move on to paint the white flowers. For this I'm going to use a thick consistency of new gamboge to paint in the center. Now let's start to paint the textures on the baskets. I'm just going to pick up a light consistency of the browns that I already have on my palette. And since the tone is already quite similar to the base color, I'm just going to use whatever I already have. So essentially you just want a color that is similar to the base. And here I'm just painting on short lines row by row while leaving out a bit of negative space in between until I fill in all of the columns to cover the whole basket. I'm going to create similar textures for the basket in front. This time I think I added a little bit more burnt umber into the mixture because the previous color was a little bit too muted. And again, I'm just going to create similar textures. This time I realized that the lines were a little bit too thick and also too light, so I'm going to go over them again later on. Here I used a darker brown to match the base color of this basket at the back and as you can see here I'm going back to the first basket. I'm using a slightly thicker consistency of a reddish brown and I'm painting it from the right to the left because I want the left to be a little bit lighter. As for this planter on the right, I also use a slightly thicker consistency of a color that's similar to the base and I'm just painting on vertical lines while leaving some negative space for a wood grain texture. For this, I'm just keeping it simple and just making vertical lines but you can also include other green textures as well. And since I want the right to be in shadow, I use a slightly darker brown to paint on more of those vertical lines. And with this same dark brown, I'm also going to paint the holes on the crate as well as the nails. As for the wood grain textures on the crate, I just use a thin consistency to paint on lines following the direction of wood on the crates. At the top here, the colors were just blending too much with each other, so I used a dark brown to realign those spaces. 
The next thing I want to work on is a little bit of cast shadow. For this, I used Quin Red with Ultramarine Finest that I mixed into the browns that I already have on my palette. And I'm going to first wet the surface, then add on this color near the crates and the basket. I ended up adding more burnt umber and blue into the mix because it was a little bit too vibrant. And after I've applied the paint, I used a clean damp brush to help move the paint further out. While the surface is still damp, I'm going to add the paint bit by bit because I don't want the cast shadow to overpower the whole composition. I also end up using the same color in a very thin consistency to paint the rest of the floor since I decided to paint a little bit of background. On the right hand side here, I used a mix of indigo and burnt umber in a light consistency to create a grey. Here I'm just painting it on really lightly near the floor and as I get towards the top, I'm going to blend it with the rest of the paper. Since the light is coming from the left, here on the right I decided to use a slightly thicker consistency. So the right hand side is slightly darker than the left, but just like the left side, I'm going to blend it until the color of the paper as I get towards the top. With the same light grey that I have, I also added a bit of shadow to some of the white flowers. I want to make the composition of the white flowers a bit more dynamic, so here I'm painting on more leaves, especially in the surrounding area, using a thick consistency of the dark green. I really wasn't liking the bunny tails here, but I was still trying to salvage it by making it look a bit more voluminous by adding some shadow using a thick consistency of the same color mix, then softening the edges with a clean damp brush. I'm also going to add some tall grass using the green that I already have on my palette in a medium to thin consistency. I've accidentally painted over a basket handle here, so I'm going to create a white surface for me to paint on using bleed proof white. I'm also going to refine the other basket handles as well. As guide, once the cast shadows have completely dried, I'm going to go over it again. And this time, I'm not going to wet the surface beforehand. Instead, I'm using a medium consistency, painting really close to all the items, then softening the edges with a clean damp brush. And lastly, with the bleed proof white, I felt like adding more loose white flowers, so I'm painting tiny ones here over the darker elements like the basket as well as the planter. So we've basically painted all of the elements, all that's left is to do final adjustments like balancing the values as well as adding extra details. So here I'm just going to work on the white flowers further, adding more shadows using the dark green and also adding more of the looser flowers as well. After I've painted all of the white flowers, I'm going to dot the center using a thick consistency of new gamboge. A little bit more shadow behind the white flowers to make them pop against the dark value and that's basically it for this painting. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing to get notified of new videos every Friday. Like usual, the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!